Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am starting yet another new series. I'm full of series this year. This is going to be a quilt block series. I would like to keep a quilt block series going on for my entire YouTube career if possible because I can't think of anything I would love more than to be forced to make quilt blocks for no reason other than to just show you how to make one. Because I'm not much for putting quilts together but the blocks, I'm totally addicted to that. So here's what I'm thinking, and I don't know for sure, because as I am speaking to you right now, I have not even started, and I really don't have much idea as to what I'm going to do. I try to think about it, but my mind wanders, so I'm just going to sit down and start. But what I'm thinking is, I'm going to make blocks. I have no clue if I will end up putting those blocks together as a quilt, and maybe putting that on eBay, or maybe just making various tote bags out of those blocks. So what I thought though that I would do is each block will be different, but I'm going to try to pick from a predetermined stack of scrap fabric so that they'll at least be cohesive in colors and things like that. No matter what I want to do with them after, if I want to put them together into projects, I can. Or if I want to sell just the quilt blocks on eBay, which is also a good option, they'll at least be cohesive. You will be able to follow along and just make whatever size blocks you want for whatever projects you want. These will be all crazy quilt for this particular series that I have in my mind. And I'm going to be using various scraps of fabric, all kinds. It could be cotton, rayon, satin, just any kind of fabric that I have, even stretchy things. It's going in there. So this is a good project for you to do if you have like a lot of clothes that you don't wear anymore and you want to cut up your clothes for fabric or if you go to a thrift store, buy some old sheets or blankets or whatever. You can find fabric so cheap by not going to the fabric store. Just look at old clothes or old bedding, different things like that. So let's just get started with this, huh? What do you think? All right, I'm ready. I'm ready to start. I have decided to go with this kind of heavyweight fabric that I would never use for clothing. I don't know what possessed me to ever buy it, but I have quite a bit of it. I have enough of this to make 20 blocks if I want. I have no clue if I will need that many, but I'm going to just keep it. I do want to say you do not have to have the same foundation for all your pieces, but it is good to have it be the same weight. It doesn't matter what colors your foundation pieces are because we're never going to see this in the finished product of any quilt or tote. This is just to sew our crazy quilt pieces onto. I just went through and picked a whole bunch of things, kind of like in pinks and blues, I don't know. And again, in case this is a big project, I want to make sure I have enough so that the whole project would look cohesive if I do decide to turn it into a quilt. So these are blocks that obviously never got put into a project. I have some t-shirt fabric. If you use stretchy and you're not uh, good at sewing stretchy, you can always use some iron-on fusing to make it sturdy so it doesn't stretch. That works great. One of these days I'll show you how to do that. Like some pink snake skin or something. Some pink like this. I try to get some prints, some planes, some solids I should say. Here's some tie-dye like this, some nice pink satin, probably polyester, some leftover fabric from the shirt I recently made. You'll notice these from a tote that I just made, some solid blue. So I think we're good and as I go, if I decide I need more, I will certainly pick through. So let me get set up and then I'll be right back. I did want to mention that my square happens to be a little bit bigger than 13 inches square. I always make it a little bit larger than I want so that I can square it off after I'm done sewing and then I will stitch around to hold everything into place so this will end up being a 13 inch block. If you ever have stretchy prints that you like, those make good starting pieces, meaning either the center that you put down or whatever your first piece because you're just going to be stitching on it. You don't have to be like flipping it over and watching the stretch. So since I really like this piece, I'm going to lay it right here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do crazy quilt style, but we're going to make vertical stripes or horizontal, depending on which way you use the block. Pick any kind of strip you want, doesn't have to be cut straight. 
In fact, it's nice if it's a little bit wonky, you know, like at an angle here and there. And now I'm going to go cut a few other strips and I'll show you how we're going to do this. I went ahead and trimmed this down so it's a little bit narrower on the bottom than it is on the top, just because I like wonky. I just cut a strip of fabric like 15 inches long because I know that will be long enough. I'm going to put the right side onto this. So right sides together. I know this might look like the right side, but this is actually the back side of the fabric. And I am just going to go to the machine and sew right here all along. You'll notice I didn't pin anything. I don't. But you are certainly free to put a couple of pins in this if you want to hold it into place. You will also see that my lines here are not perfect. I have the other fabric on the bottom sticking out. That's okay too. In fact, I like it when my bottom fabric sticks out a little bit because now as I sew down, I'm sure that I will be catching the bottom fabric into my stitching. So I'm just going to go straight down. And I just go right off the block. Now I am going to go press this, laying down like this to set the seam. Then I will open it and press down. So this is what we have so far. We have two pieces laying down. You can continue to build this way or you can start to go in this direction. It doesn't matter. How about we just continue this way? Now I wanted to say, if you have fabric that's not long enough, like see I have this block, but see that's not long enough. But if I wanted to, I can sew two pieces of this fabric together to make my strip long enough. But I have enough long pieces, so I'm just going to go with what I have already. How about we put a little bit of blue gingham in there? Not long enough. I have some longer. I'm going to make a kind of narrower strip this time. You can make the strips as wide or as narrow as you want. Now I'm going to put something a little bit wider down here. I think I'll go like that. And I'm just going to go sew. Okay, I'm going to go press to set, open, and press. I think I want to use a piece of this floral now. I'm going to let this piece of floral just go right off the edge and be the last piece that I put on this side. I'm not even going to cut the strip. I'm just going to lay this whole piece of fabric down. I am going to stitch like this. Then when I open it, I will trim around and I'll show you. Now you can see that I have gone completely off the square. So I'm just going to flip this over now. I'm just going to cut next to my edge. This still has to be trimmed and squared off. Cut a little bit of that off, a little bit of this off. Now you can get a better idea of what that is going to look like if I can possibly stay under the camera. I'm going to go ahead since I have this and I'm going to go put a piece of this on this side now. Trim this off a little bit. So same thing, I'm going to work on this side now. So now I'm going to be putting, well, let me turn it this way because I like to work with my most of my fabric to the left of me. And I'm just going to, that's going to be pretty cool. I might make it nice and wide too. That's another thing, you don't have to decide yet. I could just go like this, stitch it down, come back, open it, and then decide how wide or narrow I want it to be. So let me do that this time to show you. I would like to go show you what I mean when I say to press it because some of you probably don't realize but I just don't want to undo my camera right now. All I mean is I'm going to the machine and with it like this, flat, I'm going to press this right here, flat. And that sets the seam. It does something to the thread that makes it so much more crisp when you then open your fabric than you're going to press again, to just press it open. I will show you at some point. I'm just not set up to right now. So here is what we have, and I'm going to leave this end. Now, if you do it this way, make sure you don't cut through your bottom fabric. You don't want to cut through your foundation. So I'm going to start a little bit narrow here, and I'm just going to go up and make it wide up here. Pretty darned cool. Our next piece will go here, and I think I'll make the next piece now wide at the bottom. Let's try a piece of my shirt that I made not too long ago. So this piece is going to go down likey so. 
Let's go so. We are getting there. Let's go with one more piece. How about another piece of gingham to finish this one off? I think that will be cool. I'm going to use this as an example to show you how you can make a strip. See, this isn't long enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this in half. I'm going to sew these two pieces together, and then that's going to give me a long enough strip. All right, I'm just going to sew straight across. And when I press a seam down, I don't open it. I just press it to the side. Easy peasy. Even though gingham doesn't have a right side and a wrong side, at least mine doesn't, this for sure now has a right side and a wrong side because I have created a seam. So this is my wrong side with the seam sticking up. So this is my right side. I want my right side to go on to my fabric. We'll do it this way. Now you can see there's a lot of this fabric below sticking out. That's just because that fabric on the bottom is kind of curved out. I don't care. Leaving it there. I'm just going to sew along my gingham. I can't believe I forgot again. All I did was the same old, same old. You didn't have to watch. I just stitched down. We are going to do the same thing. We're going to flip this over to trim. But I want to show you that, yes, there is a seam there. This is a crazy quilt. It can be as crazy as you want. There is absolutely nothing wrong. In fact, it sometimes just adds to it to have seams here and there. You could even have your strips be half one color, half another. doesn't matter. Whatever. But let's just flip this over. Trim a little bit. Now I'm going to square this up. So I'm just going to, and yes, I still don't use a rotary cutter. I just, ah, I like just do it. I don't care about fancy tools, although a rotary cutter is good. So I'm going to square this up. I'm just going to start with one side, and I just use the edge of my mat to cut. Am I even under camera? Not quite. Sorry about that. I suck at this. <laughs> now, the side that I just cut, I'm going to put that on the 13-inch line. Again, nothing has to be perfect. This is all going to end up being enclosed at some point. Now I take a clean line that I just cut and I line it up on any line here. And one more time. Now, just to keep this all in place, I'm going to go to the machine and sew close to the edge all the way around. I'll flip it over and I'll show you what we have. Okay, are we ready for the big reveal? Let's do it this way. <gasps> Yay! Either way, it's beautiful. Oh my God, I absolutely love it. So I'm just going to say bye now. I will take a couple of pictures of this so you can see it. And uh, I will be back with the next quilt block soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!